Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. I am Trailer Trash Tim. Thank you so much for being here with me today. It is mighty good to have you. I don't know when you're going to see this video. I'm shooting it on a Saturday morning. I wasn't able to shoot yesterday. I was just swamped with work. Uh, so, uh, and I'm housebound today because it's, it's mighty cold outside. It's, but you're tired of hearing about the weather, I'm sure. Uh, so anyway, whenever you see this, um, maybe it'll post uh, sometime today. I'm not exactly sure. But tomorrow, um, I will be leaving uh, in the afternoon uh, for Missouri, as I told you uh, uh, several days ago. I'm going up there to take a care package to Marina and see her and check on her and her dad and Benita and um, it'll be a real quick turnaround. Um, I'll be going up Sunday and I should be back home uh, Monday or Tuesday, probably Tuesday. Uh, but I'll take you along with me and I'll do a little bit of filming and uh, maybe I'll get Marina on camera so she can say hey to you as well. But anyway, there's a couple of housekeeping notes I need to take care of that I keep forgetting that I need to mention but actually, Marina reminded me of this the other day. First of all, all of my videos, as far as I know, are also on Rumble. Um, I don't really get in the habit of going there, but I do have my uh, YouTube account linked up with Rumble. I think it's important to be there in case, you know, YouTube ever drops the hammer on you. Uh, and some of you, uh, I, I, I know, go to Rumble. And uh, so my videos uh, all should be up there as far as I know. Another thing is this, down below, I, never, I almost never talk about this, but down below there's all kinds of contact links. There's my uh, mailing address, my email address, and if you find value in the content and you'd like to support the channel, there's several ways you can do that as well. I have, uh, uh, I think, PayPal. Uh, yeah, I know I have PayPal. I have a buy me a coffee. Some of you have been reaching out to me with that, and I just haven't mentioned it in a long time. And for those of you that have reached out uh, to uh, support the channel, thank you so much. That really means a lot to me, and I really do appreciate it. And if you'd like to say thanks uh, in some tangible way, uh, I'm never going to hound you about money, believe me. But uh, that's that's down in the show notes and the links below if you should be interested. All right, let's get going here. Several things I want to talk about. First of all, there is a Democrat in the state of Florida by the name of Maxwell Frost. Maxwell Frost uh, is in the uh, Florida House. And Maxwell Frost, <laughs> boy, the hits just keep coming with these guys, I'll tell you. Max, Maxwell Frost challenged his Republican colleagues to introduce a bill that removes the Statue of Liberty because of their stances on immigration at the southern border. This is in thehill.com. Frost, a first-term legislator, read part of the poem, The New Colossus, which was cast and mounted on, onto the lower level of the Statue of Liberty in New York as a message to immigrants arriving at Ellis Island in the 1800s. While at an over House Oversight and Accountability Co Committee hearing Wednesday, Frost called out his GOP colleagues and Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene specifically. No, I'm sorry, he's, he's in the U.S. House, not in the Florida House. He's in the U.S. House. But he called out his GOP colleagues and Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene specifically for their treatment of immigrants and their sweeping bill that would dramatically restrict the asylum process and create stricter policies and surveillance on regional migration and undocumented migrants. Frost said immigrants deserved better than what they are being offer, offered. Quote, don't welcome them if you plan to reject them. If you keep pushing your bigoted HR2 bill, then also pass this bill. I've taken the liberty of drafting it for you, Frost said, holding up a piece of paper. It removes the Statue of Liberty, our largest symbol that tells people to come here. This is who you are, removing the fabric of America. So I want to know which Republican who supports and voted for H.R. 2 will introduce this bill, he continued. If you're going to support H.R. 2 and these bigoted measures, the least you can do is not be a damn liar, unquote. 
Oh, would I like five minutes in the room with this old boy. Frost accused GOP lawmakers of being more interested in peddling hate than finding solutions that will fix the immigration system. Where to start with Mr. Frost? Maxwell Frost of Florida. This boy needs to be taken out to the woodshed because he ain't right in the head. Now, where to begin with this guy? All right, first of all, let's let's talk about immigration for a moment, and let's talk about a nation protecting its borders, okay? Because this guy has got a really bad case of cognitive dissonance. If you have a nation, then your nation, if you wish to keep your nation, has to be fortified with borders. That's just basic stuff, right? You just understand that. If you're going to have a nation, you have to protect your nation with some kind of border, Otherwise, you'll just get, I mean, homeowners understand this for heaven's sakes. How many of you lock your door at night? How many of you have a a fence in your front yard or backyard or what have you? Or you own a piece of property and you have it protected with some kind of fence or, or structure of some kind. I mean, this is just common sense, is it not? Is there not a gate around the White House? Well, isn't that like, I don't know bigoted or racist or whatever. Maxwell Frost is saying that anybody who, uh, you know, is, is not agreeing with his stance on immigration is a bigot. That's what he's saying. Now, first of all, we've got to understand terms here, okay? What, Ma- uh, what Mr. Frost calls immigrants, I call illegal aliens, okay? And there is a difference, Let's say you have a hardworking man and his wife and their children uh, that are living in Poland, for example, and because of, um, of maybe political strife or, or persecution of some kind, they want to immigrate into the United States. They're coming to the United States because they want to be Americans. They want to enjoy the liberty and freedom that they've heard about. And they go through the legal process of immigration. That's how it is supposed to be done, ideally and typically. Mr. Frost does not understand that's not what we're dealing with right now. What we're dealing with now is a deluge on our borders. We are being bombarded every day with all sorts of illegal aliens, people we know nothing about. And we are losing our sovereignty as a nation because of it. But in Mr. Frost world, anybody that says anything about it is a bigot. And he says, yeah, what you evil Republicans need to do is sign my bill so that we can move the Statue of Liberty out of Ellis Island. Okay, You're talking about apples, Mr. Frost. We're talking about oranges. You don't know what the hell you're talking about, to put it bluntly. We're not talking about the immigration, legal immigration, of legal individuals who want to legally immigrate into the United States. We are talking about a border that is so porous Everybody and anybody can come into our country without restriction. Nobody's stopping them. Nobody's going to stop them. And they know it. The word's been put out. And this is what uh, Joe Biden wants. And this is what Alejandro Mayorkas wants. They got no problem with illegal immigration. They are trying to, as Obama said, fundamentally transform America. And they're doing so. And anytime any Republican, such as MJT, stands up against it, she's called a bigot, don't you know? I want to make one thing clear as well. People who want to uh, secure the borders of their nation, they are not bigots, ladies and gentlemen. You're not bigoted just because you want to protect your homeland. That does not make you a bigot. And this is such a childish thing for Mr. Frost to say. Isn't it a pity that people like this are in the United States House of Representatives? This 
complete disconnect from reality. It isn't that you, you are a bigot. It isn't that you don't love people. It is that you love your country and you want to protect your country and you want to protect everybody that lives in your country from any potential threat. Not everybody who comes across our borders is here to do good things. Some of them have bad intentions for us and that's why we're supposed to have a fence or a wall or something. That's why we have laws. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Frost, it's back to school for you, buddy, because you don't know what you're talking about, and you basically need to grow up. You, you, you are a typical Democrat who cannot handle a serious subject without quickly resorting to name-calling. Somebody disagrees with you, and they're instantly labeled a bigot. Well, just because we don't agree with you does not make us a bigot. I'll tell you what it does do. It makes you wrong, buddy. All right, here's another one. Let's go on to another member of Congress of the Democrat style. How many of you know of Looney Ted Lou? Ted Lou is an, uh, I guess you would call him an Asian American, and he is from the, the state of California. He is in the House of Representatives. Now, let me ask you a question quickly. What would you say the number one issue that is uh, affecting America right now is, what, what's, what would you say is the number one issue that we need to get a handle on, we need to tackle right now? Would you say it's illegal, Im illegal aliens, illegal immigration? Would you say it's inflation? Would you say it's war? I mean, these are all valid, valid ideas, right? The, all these are serious problems we need to tackle. Well, for Ted Lieu, let me tell you what he thinks is the biggest problem facing America. This is from the Gateway Pundit. Brace yourselves. Representative Ted Lieu, Democrat of California, is introducing a bill in Congress to ban the sale and use of rodent glue traps. I kid you not. Furthermore, the bill is co-sponsored by who else? That's right, Pencil Neck Geek, otherwise known as Congressman Adam Schiff, also from California. Now, who knows what a glue trap is? A glue trap is a uh, is one option that you have if you have a problem with rodents. If you have mice or rats somewhere. Uh, and you call the uh, pest control people out to your house to tend to the, uh, the infestation to whatever degree you have, or you can do this yourself. You can set out a trap with cheese or peanut butter or whatever. But another deterrent that they make now is a glue trap. And I have used these before, and they work. You just set a glue trap out and uh, go to bed and sleep peacefully. And the, the next uh, day, you may well have a critter who is uh, embedded inside the glue trap, and he can't get out. Uh, but for Ted Lieu, that's a bad thing. We can't. That's cruel and unusual. So Ted Lieu is entered. <laughs> oh, we live. This is clown world, folks. This is clown world. Uh, and Ted uh, Ted Lieu wants to um, ban them. This is what he says. Quote. Glue traps are ruthless, inhumane, and can be dangerous to the health of humans and their pets. No, Ted. There are numerous other ways to trap small animals that don't prolong their suffering. As a proud member of the Animal Protection Caucus, I'm pleased to introduce this bill to stop the needless suffering of these animals. Never in my life have I been concerned about the suffering of of a rat ever. I wonder if he's got a problem with raid for cockroaches as well because they're animals too, you know. You know what's sad about this? Ted Lou cares more about rats apparently than he does people because I could pretty well tell you where he stands on the issue, for example, of abortion. But rats, 
rats. We can't have rats suffering out there, folks. Don't you know if you've got if you've got a glue trap around your house, you are a you are a evil person, and you need to get rid of the glue trap because you don't want to make any rats suffer. The suffering of rats is way down my list of priorities. I got to be honest with you. I just don't give rats much of a thought unless they're in and around my house, in which case I'm going to do something about them. And among the things I will do about them is use a glue trap, Teddy. Sorry. But if a glue trap helps me uh, get rid of mice or rats, guess who's buying a glue trap? Thankfully, I don't have that problem as far as I know because I've got a uh, little uh, rat eater running around here somewhere, if you know what I mean. Every now and then, Kiki will bring a mouse up to the deck, and she's whining and whimpering, but and I'll just pat her on the head and say, good job, now get that thing out of here. Not very often, but uh, anyway. All right, let's move on. I want to talk about the vice presidential sweepstakes uh, real quickly. Uh, Donald Trump is uh, almost surely uh, going to be getting the GOP nomination by this point. This coming Tuesday, of course, is the New Hampshire primary, which he is expected to win and win handily. Uh, Ron DeSantis has already pulled out of New Hampshire. Uh, I would, I would, I would pretty much predict DeSantis is toast. And well, he, that's not a tough prediction to make. But I would predict he's probably going to be getting out of this thing very soon. There's no path for DeSantis. There's no path uh, for Neocon uh, Nimrata Nikki Haley. The primary after New Hampshire is South Carolina, and that's where uh, Nimrata Nikki Haley, the neocon, used to be governor. Uh, she is almost surely to lose her home state to Donald Trump, uh, who also just got an endorsement uh, the other day from Senator Tim Scott, also of South Carolina. So Nikki Haley is going to lose her home state to Donald Trump. Uh, Ron DeSantis is going to lose Florida to Donald Trump. This is a fait accompli. Uh, and one can only speculate as to why Haley and DeSantis are uh, sticking around. Something may be afoot. Don't be surprised. I've talked about that before. Uh, but anyway, you, you, you start to wonder who Trump... My nose is itching off my face. Please pardon me, but man, it's itching. Maybe somebody's coming to see me, right? Who's going? To, who's Trump going to pick as vice president? I got several names I want to throw at you. I don't know what he's going to do. I do know that uh, Don Jr. is really high on Tucker Carlson. I would be fine with Tucker uh, Tucker Carlson as vice president. Uh, my first choice, uh, if I were making the choice uh, for Trump, would uh, probably be Vivek Ramaswamy. I would also would not mind him selecting Rand Paul as vice president. That would be fine with me as well. It's interesting that he just got this endorsement from Tim Scott, the uh, senator from South Carolina. Some are speculating that Scott uh, may have a shot at the vice presidential sweepstakes as well. Um, how about J.D. Vance of Ohio? He might be a good pick. Byron Donald's name has been mentioned. Uh, Byron Donald's of the congressman from uh, Florida. Um, uh, I don't think Carrie Lake would be an option. She's running for Senate in uh, Arizona. Um, and there's another senator. Now his name is escaping me, but I don't think they'd want to give up that seat. Um, but I want to throw a name at you that I don't think I've heard anybody else mention in terms of uh, the vice presidency. This, this uh, man uh, would not be my first choice, but I would not mind if Trump chose him because I think he's, he's pretty sharp. And he also brings, you know, you, presidents, presidents used to select vice presidents during, you know, before they were elected based on whether or not they thought the vice president could deliver his home state for them. That's, that was a thinking when Kennedy selected Lyndon Johnson he, the thinking was Lyndon Johnson would help deliver Texas uh, for Kennedy. I don't know if that's true or not. And, of course, the fact is that Kennedy and Johnson pretty much hated each other, but that was the thought to be the politically expedient thing to do. I don't know if that's still so much a factor any longer because now we've seen uh, 
vice presidents not deliver their home states. I don't really know if it matters. I know Gore uh, lost his own state when he ran for president. He, he got beat in Tennessee by George Bush. But the name I'm thinking of is a senator from the state of Wisconsin, and I'm talking about Senator Ron Johnson. I think Ron Johnson ought to get a look, and I think he might be, I think he's a fairly solid senator, a uh, fairly conservative uh, senator, and I, I think uh, he's got a spine. I think uh, Trump might want to give this man a, a look-see. Uh, just, you know, we will see as time goes on. Now, uh, Nikki Haley uh, was asked, uh, Neocon Nikki was asked about the vice presidency in Amherst, New Hampshire, and she said being vice president is, quote, off the table. This is in an interview uh, with, uh, who was it with? I think it was with Politico. Um, the declaration delivered to a pair of diners at Marianne's in Amherst and overheard by a political, Politico reporter on Friday. That's what she said. She was at a diner talking to people. And she said, quote, I've said from the very beginning I don't play for second. I don't want to be anybody, anybody's vice president. That is off the table, Haley said in a slightly irritated tone. I do not want to be vice president, period. I don't know how many more times I can say that, unquote, she told a local ABC affiliate. Now, first of all, in my heart of hearts, I don't believe Trump is going to pick Nikki Haley. I can't imagine him picking Nikki Haley. There would be a serious backlash against Donald Trump should he uh, select Nikki Haley as his vice president. Don Jr. is dead set against it, or so he says. But I thought what was interesting about this Politico article is <laughs> politicians like Nikki Haley, are, they're slippery, they're slimy, and she, she makes it clear, I, won't, I don't want to be vice president. I don't know how many more times I can say that. I don't want to be anybody's vice president. But she never comes out and says, hand to God, I'm not going to do it. Now, again, I don't think it'll be an issue, but I would bet you a dollar to a bag of donuts if Donald Trump did come to her and offer it to her, I think she'd fall all over herself to take it. I don't have any doubt about that in my mind. I don't think he's going to. I hope he doesn't do that. Uh, but we've got some fairly qualified people that would serve very well in that role. And let's face it, Trump, if elected, is only going to serve one term. This is He is basically going to be a – he'll be able to do a lot of good things. But, you know, anytime a second-term president takes office, he's almost instantly labeled a lame duck. So it's not unreasonable to view Trump as a placeholder for the next possible president. So you've got to be asking, you know, the thinking is, who's the vice president? Well, it's got to be a person who's ready to step into the job from day one in case something catastrophic happens. Well, we know that four years after Trump is inaugurated, we're going to have another president. So in some ways, Trump will be a placeholder president. Begging the question, who do you want to be the president four years after Trump is sworn in? Of course, at that time, it'd be a wide open field. You'd have several uh, Republicans and Democrats vying for the position again in 2028. But the vice president uh, for Trump would kind of have um, some advantage already being in office. So I think it's very important who he selects for president. <clears throat> My top three would be Tucker, Vivek, and Rand. I hope it is one of those three. But we shall see. But guess who might be back in the news in terms of the Democratic race for the Democratic nomination? As we know, the only major declared candidate is uh, the current occupant of the White House himself, Sleepy Joe, Crooked Joe Biden, whatever you prefer. Nobody of note is running against him. You've heard all kinds of names being bantied about, such as Gavin Newsom. The Democrats really want Gavin Newsom. I think Gavin Newsom was a terrible candidate. I think Trump would beat him almost as badly as he would beat Donald, uh, uh, Joe Biden. 
And the unlikability factor of Hillary Clinton, I believe, would preclude her from getting the nomination. The fact of the matter is the Democrats just don't have anybody to run against Trump. They just don't. <clears throat> Except maybe one person. Now take this for whatever it's worth. This may be uh, of the National Enquirer sort of reporting. I don't know. This is from Cindy Adams and the New York Post. And her headline reads, Don't be shocked if Michelle Mabel Obama sneaks her way into the 2024 race. Cindy Adams write the, uh, writes this in the New York Post. <clears throat> she says, we've been hearing this drum beat for a while, and now we are hearing it louder. Michelle says she's terrified Trump will win, as I covered the other day. She has sent a survey to Democratic biggies asking their feelings about her candidacy. Obama is quietly angling for Joe to go. He's weaseled up to this for a few weeks Mouths aren't talking, but mouths are knowing. So she writes, the Obamas are now nudging to force slow-mo Joe to go, drop out. It's like, who else is there? And she goes on and on in the article. Now, I have maintained that Joe Biden is not running this country. And I am, I am absolutely confident in telling you that Barack Obama is. This is the third term of Barack Obama, and there are a lot of Americans who believe what I just said. Obama is ostensibly right down the street from the White House. That's one thing. Susan Rice is a close associate of, of his, as is Valerie Jarrett, and they all hobnob with uh, Joe Biden. They're in his ear as well. Biden has handlers because he doesn't know what day it is. And I'm telling you that behind the scenes, Barack Obama is pulling the strings. Don't doubt that, folks. I'm telling you that's what's going on. It is the third term of Barack Obama. And Barack Obama himself is no idiot, and he knows that Biden is a horrible candidate. So could we have a last-minute insertion of uh, Michelle Obama? It wouldn't surprise me a bit. would not surprise me a bit. You know, it would not be difficult to get Biden out of the White House. There's a lot of different scenarios. They could uh, say, uh, we will take care of Hunter, we'll pardon Hunter, but you got to go, something to that effect. Or they could just come out and announce uh, he's in poor health, which he is. I mean, that is valid. And uh, we got to do something else. I don't know if Biden makes it to, to the convention, and if he does... That might be must-see TV because it, it might be an interesting convention. Be interested to see if any other names are brought up at the convention for consideration of the nomination. Okay, folks, that's what's going on right now. Uh, my next video will be from the road somewhere. I'll check in with you. It's going to be probably Tuesday, perhaps Wednesday, before I do another show like this, but I will be... I will be posting something just so I can pop in and say hey because I miss you guys. And uh, I hope you uh, miss me to some degree. <laughs> we shall see. But I'll pop in and say hey uh, from somewhere on the road going and coming. Everybody go out there and have a great day. This is Trailer Trash Tim. Like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you would. I would appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon.